back to the Mob Mentality Show. I'm Austin Chadwick. This is Chris Lucian. We're continuing our series on uh, organizational excellence or team excellence. Yep. And, uh, you know, so we've been kind of hitting multiple topics like psychological safety, uh, kindness, consideration, respect, and trust. Mm -hmm. And we, there's kind of a big theme to it all. Do you want to explain that a little bit, Chris? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I think when we when we first started uh, this uh, broadcast, we, we started with... Um, kind of essentials of, of mobbing from the roles perspective. And then we talked about like the broader team. Um, and then uh, coming, coming back into psychological safety and, and with psychological safety, you have this kind of like, how do we, how do we become really good? Um, and, and so then I, I think that, you know, kind of the ending of like our toolbox of, uh, for success, I guess, uh, is this idea of the virtuous loop, which, um, we're going to cover two main topics and then we're going to kind of go, uh, which is going to start out with retros, go into learning time. And then, um, and then we'll talk about the virtuous loop. And, uh, what I'll, what I'll just say right now is that this, this is kind of what I saw, it, uh, after we'd kind of developed, um, uh, the psychological safety to to give feedback, ask for help, and and it really you know mob programming kind of started from a place of vulnerability um, when somebody asked for help, and then and then I think the, the the two things that we really had in place before that were uh, dedicated learning time and retrospectives, and I think that those those two things created this virtual loop, virtuous loop, and so um, we'll just get started with with retrospectives, and uh, Austin maybe you can talk a little bit about um retros in general and then i will when we get to the virtuous loop uh, yeah. episode i'll explain the reasoning for why i wanted to cover these two first that yeah, sounds good uh so for me retrospectives uh you know came from my own agile journey uh when i came to learn about agile in college kind of knew about it and then uh, we decided to try it out at a place i was working at and to me, it is basically a foundation of so many good things. So you go to the Agile Manifesto, it's one of the principles that teams reflect often and you know, inspect and adapt and find ways to improve. And I think it, in many ways, it can be the foundation for so many amazing things in your process. Like if you, and in your teams, if you just start with retrospectives, which is a set aside time, it could be five minutes at the end of a mob rotation, it could be an hour at the end of a day or at the end of a week, or sprint if you're doing scrum. Um, be a post-mortem at the end of a project. <laughs> we don't yeah. want to go that long without doing one. Yeah, yeah, It's, yeah, it's yeah. a thing, it's a thing. But it's an idea where you, you say, hey, you know, how are we doing? Uh, you know, what's going well, what's not going well, and what can we do to improve? You know what I mean? It can be about the process, it can be about uh, the people, the interactions, it can be about anything that's going on. And um, so learning about it and then trying them out, it was so amazing to see what great things the team brings out. You know, they, they know the pains, they know the things that are going good that should be turned up. Mm. And so having retrospectives done in any of the many different forms you can do it really is just like a foundation for so many amazing innovations, improvements, yeah. and people getting excited and owning what's mm -hmm. going on with their team. Uh, so that, that was my journey, and I learned about it and lived it, and I'm addicted now. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how about you? Yeah, yeah, I'll talk a little bit to it. Um, so I actually, uh, in in middle school, I, I started at a project based charter school, and one thing that they made us do after just about everything was called reflections, and we literally literally write what just happened and and how could we do something differently next time we had to do those things. Yeah. Um, and I found that, that, you know, I didn't really think about it for years until, uh, I, I started working with a group that did retrospectives and I was like, you know what, wait a minute. Like I've been doing this in high school for a very long time, um, and middle school. And, uh, and so, so that was kind of an interesting, uh, reaction to it. And so I, I would even break down retrospectives a little bit farther to say, um, there's this concept of uh, reflecting and then, you know, the inspect and adapt cycle, right? Like yeah. it's reflecting and then, and then changing something for the future. Um, and even, even the process of reflecting, like if you're, if you're not doing retrospectives already, you might just start not, not even with action items, just saying like, what just happened there? And, and then, and then you can move on and then, then you can build up to what just happened and what will we do differently? Um, 
I, I also, it's kind of evolved for me too over time thinking of it as an experiment. So changing only one thing, not many things at a time. I've been part of those retrospectives where many things have been changed at the same time. <laughs> um, and then you don't know what went right and what went wrong. And so things could be counterbalancing each other and you change two variables. So, right. so picking one variable to change, um, you know, chances are you're going to be working on your software for many years. And so in that you have many opportunities to just say, how could we be doing something different? Um, you know, maybe in, in the lean manufacturing side of things that might be considered like a Kaizen activity, right? Just yeah. saying like, how can we improve the cycle time or, or something, you know, more direct or, and it could go all the way to how do we improve our interpersonal re interactions. And so, um, so I, I view it as extremely important saying, given the data that we currently have, knowing what we know now, what could be changed? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think uh, this is another great deep topic and some things we'll put in the show notes like the Agile Retrospective book and we could probably do several topics on facilitation because it requires, you know, uh, the ability to facilitate a, a retrospective like this. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll, we'll put show notes on that. But the one thing I will add is the tie into mobbing. So I experienced retrospectives kind of in a more traditional scrum environment and it was great. It was really, really, really good thing for those teams, and so many great improvements came out of it. But just like everything else, I think a mobbing environment really amplifies retrospectives. Yep. Because since you're already all together, um, and so it's just like you know, waiting till the very end to test, at, you know, whether it's manufacturing or software, is going to have a lot of problems. Yep. So waiting until the end of a sprint or the end of a project release to do a retrospective is going to have a lot of problems. But in a traditional and even a more traditional agile environment, to be retroing all the time is like, well, everyone's apart and you bring them together. Everyone's apart and bring them together. And so it's harder to implement. Where with mobbing, everyone's already together. Yeah. And so something that wasn't even possible in a non-mobbing environment is now possible. Everyone, the team's already there. Mm -hmm. You can retrospect more often. Yep. And so it can be part of the mob timer or you make some sort of working agreement for how often you do it. So. I've been on teams where we've done it every couple hours. My current team, we do it uh, twice a day. But the amazing thing is, you know the pain you're feeling right then and there. Mm -hmm. And you can make a little move. You know, yeah. you can decide as a team, well, how do we, and what experiment can we run for the next six hours, the next day, you yeah. know? It's a shared experience, too, right? Like everybody yes. was there for it. And it's like, hey, I noticed this. It's like, oh, I never thought about it from that yes. perspective, right? Yeah. And, and so there's kind of that feedback piece that comes Yeah, in. yeah. And so you can do... And that also makes it less of a, a, a hurdle to set up. It felt kind of like this big event sometimes when yeah. it was like with large teams and it only happened every couple of weeks, every month. Yes. Where when it's just a mob, it can be much more informal and you can yeah. just talk or have, uh, I know Luan Falco has a good little mind map. Yeah. That's a good starter. It has like environment, people, emotions, tools, and you can just talk about those things for five minutes. You yeah. know? And so uh, it makes it easier and the innovations just happen way faster. Yeah. And I remember in when it was more spread out, people would be like, I don't even remember what happened four days ago, like yeah. a week and a half ago, you know? And yeah, so yeah, yeah. You, there's a lot of data that's just lost when yes. it's spread out. So uh, if, you're, if you're not trying mobbing, maybe this would be a good reason to even try it. It just it gives you the opportunity to retrospective yeah. more often and more efficiently. So Yeah, and, and I think I'd add to that that the... Um, so being in that shared experience and, and, and sharing those things amongst each other. Um, and then when you talk about at scale, uh, one, one really important thing to do is pay attention to the scope and the people involved and then have those people involved kind of retroing rather than trying to get, uh, I think one of the last things you want is people disengaged during retrospective. So yeah. it's just something, another one of those kind of tidbits that have come to me over the years is that um, if at all possible, you want to just reduce the number of people involved in that retro. And if you have a lot of people, um, <laughs> use something like liberating structures to, to kind of get yes. movement in those areas. Um, and, uh, and, and so the smaller, the better, the more agile kind of thing. And, and yeah. for those bigger decisions, um, uh, definitely try and expand the ways that you might do them. Cause um, I think the pattern that I've seen in the past has just been disengagement or long retros uh, can can really um, reduce the joy in the ex experience, yes. right? And uh, 
And so I think if you have joyful retros, then you you come out of that having good action items, and those good action items end up becoming good experiments. Right? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Another thing I want to say is make sure for your action item, you schedule some time to reflect on whether or not that action item worked or not. And so a lot of people, I see a lot of people doing the, okay, we retrospected, we came up with an action item, and we just do that thing now, and there's no, I, you know, so... So I keep going back to this concept of make sure that your system has a good way for bad practices to leave the system. Right. And this is this includes retrospective results. And so if you have a retro, you come up with an action item, and you know it's like, hey, you know we're not all here all the time, so no one uses the bathroom from this time to this time. It's like, no, that was a terrible idea. That should go away. <laughs> but like more often than not, I see teams being like, oh yeah, let's just keep that rule in place forever because that's the way that we've always done things. <laughs> Yeah. And so, um, and another thing I'll just throw out there is try and have retros where you just say, what should we stop doing? Yeah, exactly. And, and yet again, so one practical way to do this that I've, I've, I've loved and done in multiple mobs is if you ha if you're having all those little mini retros, if you come up with a working agreement or an experiment, just throw it up on the monitor and you have like your area on the monitor on your Kanban board where here's our current, uh, experiments or working agreements. And then at the next retro, if there's nothing pressing, you just say, oh, let's review these. Oh, this one, this one's definitely not working. Let's take it out. Or, hey, if we tweak it a little bit, that'd be good. And so yeah. it, it's a super lightweight way to just constantly be reflecting on your process. And then once things are habit, you can just take them off because it's just like we just operate that way now. Or, yeah. or we're going to make it leave the system because it's a bad experiment. And so, you know, I've seen more formal things like wiki pages with, Lots of complexity, <laughs> or it could just be sticky notes on a board or on your monitor. So it's, yeah. uh, but the heart of it is find a way to do it, mm -hmm. and it will. Because I've seen people and teams get really down and negative on retros, when, like you said, they're too long, experiments don't come from them. Yeah. Um, there's a lack of engagement, and so just by showing how retro can go really well, and things change, and things happen, and things get better can really make people who don't believe become believers in it. I've, I've seen the turn for people. So. And, and diffusion of innovation, again, and, yeah. you know, keep it to the people that want to be doing it. Yes. And then, and then yeah. it'll, that number will expand yeah. as you show results from that. Right on. Ready to close that one out? I think so. That was good. Now next time we'll talk about maybe learning time. Yeah, learning time. Fun. Yep. And then the virtuous loop. All right. Right on. Uh, so like and subscribe and uh, share if you feel like this helps somebody out. Yep. Until next time, have a good one. Bye, everybody.